On to resolution 51. Resolution amending the 2016 operating budget forfeitures, monies, district attorneys. Sponsors are Isabel Wheeler. I'll move it to the board for her floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> Abstain. Yes. Okay, number 52. Bond resolution of the County of Montgomery, New York, the county, dated March 22, 2016, authorizing the replacement of various vehicles and equipment within the county, estimating the aggregate cost thereof to be $630,000, appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the, the issuance of $600,000 and $30,000 serial bonds of the county to finance said cost, county treasurer. Sponsors were Wheeler and Beignac. Move it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Pass. Number 53. Bond resolution of the County of Montgomery, New York, the county, dated March 22nd, 2016, authorizing the acquisition and installation of computer software for the Sheriff's Office and jail within the county, estimating the aggregate cost thereof to be $228,000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $228,000 and $228,031 serial bonds of the county to finance said costs, county treasurer. Sponsors were Isabel and Wheeler. I'll bring it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstain? Yes. Bond resolution, uh, sorry, number 54. Bond resolution of the County of Montgomery, New York, the county dated March 22nd, 2016, authorizing the replacement of 400 road bridge within the county estimating the aggregate cost thereof to be $1,675,000, appropriating the set amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,675,000 serial bonds of the county to finance said cost, county treasurer. Sponsors were Diamond and Beignac. Bring it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Yes. <clears throat> Number 55, bond resolution of the County of Montgomery, New York, the county, dated March 22nd, 2016, authorizing the replacement of the public safety building roof within the county estimating the aggregate cost thereof to be $900,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $900,000 serial bonds of the county to finance said costs. County Treasurer, sponsors were Diamond and Pertel. Bring it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Okay. Resolution number 56. Resolution amending the 2016 operating budget and authorizing the county executive to enter into a contract with Hamilton, Fulton, and Montgomery Prevention Council Mental Health. Sponsors were Wheeler and Pertel. Bring it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Pass. Resolution amending the 2016 operating budget. Tourism, 
County Legislators Legislature. Wheeler and Beignac were sponsors. I'll move it to the floor for discussion. This needs two thirds vote. We're going to need two thirds vote. Uh, this, is, this is just to allocate the, the funds to the Fulton Recovery County Chamber that were, were originally budgeted for, but were a chance to we got a strategic plan from the Chamber. Uh, as we are today, we are on our way with that. And I would yeah. appreciate everyone's support. Sure. This, uh, I, I know Mark is here from the Chamber. If anybody wishes to ask any questions. Harry, go. Do. I don't have any questions. I think the Chamber was uh, responsive to the, uh, to the concerns that were raised initially. So I plan on supporting this. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Yes. Very good, thank you. <laughs> Resolution appointing the member to the Audit Committee, County Legislature, uh, Wheeler and Kelly, were sponsors. I'll bring it to the floor for discussion. And I believe the two names were. Yeah, I, I may have volunteered, but I don't think that's second <laughs> <laughs> Barbara's got to give both months she's not here. Barbara's for uh, April and Martin is for May. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, I'll bring it. <laughs> I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see, where am I? Uh, resolution 59. Resolution approving the abstract of the audited claims county legislators. Uh, Wheeler and Beignac for sponsors. Bring it to the floor for discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Against? Abstain? Yes. Okay. Resolution 60. Resolution amending the 2016 operating budget. Establishing an additional maintenance mechanic position, Sanitary District 1. Sponsors were Diamond and Kelly. I'll move it to the floor for discussion. Any discussion? Bob? For clarification, this is paid for out of the, the district, right? It's not any additional cost to the county? Town. Yeah, currently there is a position in there that's budgeted that isn't filled. That person is out. So there's three or four months, whatever we have up to now, that's, that hasn't been used. We also have a part-time line in that budget that hasn't been touched. And we also have the contingency. Uh, what will, just to be transparent, what will happen is next year, because the intent is to have these two positions once that person comes back or doesn't come back, and we fill it. So next year we'll have to fill it within that budget for this upcoming budget season. Or whatever you call it, season. Is that it? Season. Martin. Uh, and also there are more funds for the stipends that were paid to the county representative. Uh, the contingent account is the contingent account in the G fund, which is okay. so recovered. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the $5,000 that the chairman always received was budgeted last year, and then we found out it was. So that money right now, because I'm continuing to serve as chairman, isn't being paid, nor, as Mark has said, the, uh, whatever it was, it was $600 for the address. Uh, so there's. We're okay this year with it. We'll have to do something next year. Okay. And as I said earlier at the meeting, we're right now down to the superintendent and the clerk. So they're working seven days a week. Now somebody has to man that place every day? You, you got yeah. to do the checks. You got to at least at minimum do the checks, which is Saturdays and Sundays when nobody 
they're, they're doing it. But again, there used to be five and a half people there. Now yeah. there's two. Okay. Anyone else? I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Yes. Resolution 61. Resolution establishing the part-time agricultural planning assistant position and amending the 2016 operating budget, economic development and planning. Uh, Kelly and Beignac were sponsors. I have Kelly Nellis, the Corey, Corey Kelly Nellis Corey. here from Soil and Water, and he's also on the Ag Board. Uh, would you care to, to yes. make a comment? Yes. Yeah, I uh, <coughs> heard that this came up last week, and I'm definitely here to discuss it. Um, I'm here as a representative of the Ag and Environment Protection Board. I hope you guys know me on the board. District Manager of the Soil and Water Office. Um, one of the things that we discussed at length and wholeheartedly at the Ag and Environment Protection Board was how to how to best manage this plan and what the best way is to finish this plan. And uh, last October, uh, the board unanimously voted to hire a local person, whether it's contractually, you know, it's not an county employee, but you do it contractually or hire you know, a person on the books as a county employee and uh, you know bring in some people when we need it bring in consultants and maybe write the plan depending on the specialty that we can get there so uh, there's a lot of opposition from uh, uh we'll mention names we had opposition to it after we voted unanimously there was a long 50 minute discussion on whether or not we should do it uh and then it was brought up in january again you know we should be have a consultant here um, I was opposed to it, and the reason I'm opposed to it, and that's why I wanted to bring to the board tonight, was we just finished uh, in a plan here in Montgomery County. We hired consultants. We spent uh, the first consultant eighty thousand dollars. We got portable plate, internet. <clears throat> Looks they they're supposed to make one visit to the county. They have fourteen counties. They're supposed to make one visit to each county and visit each town, each zoning office. It never happened. Oh, so we finally, after we were all done and said, we got them to come back and visit one county in all 14 counties. Um, information was really uh, so far. I was uh, disappointed. We hired three uh, consulting firms. They all failed. Um, Bill has expressed that we got one here that's currently being operated on. We have a consultant here. that did not meet the standards of the contract. There's some issues with it. So as a board member, I felt was because of that case I had in my mouth, the consultants weren't able to facilitate this properly. And I also, uh, I did send a, uh, a slight biography for an employee, a perspective of an employee. And I told him I know three farmers here in the county that have great educational background. The, the one that we sent, I called and said, would you be available to do this? She did say yes. Um, I asked her to send a late biography to Bill, uh, she's a journalist by trade, a research journalist for uh, several magazines and uh, universities. And she's also a marketer. She has a home, uh, vegetable farm in the CSA that they market the products in New York City and very successful. So I think we have an amazing skill set here. We're agriculturally founded. And what I really want to see is somebody come into the county, spend their time here, work on our county, and Probably the biggest thing that bothered me was when we got the cover letter to the RFP that congratulated us on our dedication to agriculture, our commitment to agriculture, and said Oneida County is driven by agriculture. I said, they couldn't even fix their own form letter. So the RFP, they couldn't even get all the Montgomery's in there and take out the previous county's information. So my final comment might have been a little bit aggressive was we can just call them and ask them to send us a copy of their farm and put it on our shelf. If we go this route with a consultant, I do feel that we'll get this portal plate information. It's going to be uh, lower quality and really getting the consultants to come out here and spend time in our county was extremely difficult. So I was, I was disappointed. Uh, Bob Harris is a member of the uh, Ag Farm Protection Board also. I do thank oh, you for okay. giving, giving me a couple minutes, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, Bob, sure. Questions. Yeah. Okay, sure. Based on what Corey is is presented to us and uh, I think I understand your indictment of consultants um, but I'm not sure how that gets us to the people that you know would be, would be uh, good at this and how do you 
what did you base that assessment on? I noticed when the RFP went out that the person responding, and again, I understand that there might have been some typos, but I think it's more important to address the, uh, the nature of the work plan and methodology as submitted by the consultant. Did you find fault with that? With the plan to work with it? Um, like I said, the opposition is what we need is the fact that we hired these people. I know what we're going to get. Well, hang on a second. So I stopped. Excuse me. With Excuse the RFP. Me. I did not. Really, I asked a straightforward question. Okay. The, yes. the, the RFP, okay, requested from respondents a work plan and the methodology that we use. Yes. I'm asking you. If you found fault with that response, um, Bob Harris was the only Bob Harris and Elmer were the ones that got a copy of the RFP. I did not see the RFP. You didn't, you didn't see the, but you read the response. I read the I read the cover letter which was brought to the meeting. Did they tell you in the response how they were, how they planned on doing the job? No. Do you have something you like? You want to say something? Yeah, I I, I can put my two cents in for what it's worth. Um, to answer your question. No, we didn't really have a problem with their with their plan of work or their methodology. Um, I think I'd like to reiterate, though, uh, something that Corey was talking about. And we'll expand a little bit more on it. If we have somebody local here, uh, I think we should make every attempt we can. Uh, we don't need to be going outside of the county or outside of the area of the state because we did notice uh, when Elma and and I and uh, wasn't uh, the, the other lady in the planning that left. When, we, when the three of us reviewed it, we did note there were a lot of boilerplate type responses in both of the RFPs. Um, I, I personally feel that if we have somebody local, that person will have boots on the ground more frequently and will be able to get around the town and do a much more thorough job than if we have a company from outside who comes in occasionally to work on the project. During those discussions, did anyone raise the point that, per that perhaps the reason there's boilerplate is because the company does this on a regular basis? Yes. So, so let's just let's back it up for just a second. If they had inserted Montgomery County, for instance, the whole thing would have been more acceptable to you? Well, because no, that's what I'm getting. And I want to add one other thing, too, because during discussions last week, I had to make an apology because because I, I, I suggested that perhaps there was somebody in mind for the job. And I had to back off of that because I was informed that was not the case. Now tonight, I hear that there are three people that, that, that would be in this No, what I, what I said is I know, I know personally of three people in my government county that, uh, that own farms, that have very high level of education, whether it's master's or doctor level. I express, I know those three people. <coughs> and they said, well, would they be interested? I said, well, I don't know them if they would want a job. So I contacted them, and I talked about their educational background and what they did, and then I asked them to build. I said, well, have a done their biography. And that's what we did. And I said, so this person is available, and she would do it. So there's certainly, uh, before that, I hadn't spoke with anybody, and I only spoke with one because this was, has to come here and come through the process. So I'm not going to ask three people to come in. But I did talk to her and say, What's your capability, and would you be available because they are farmers and they have their own jobs? Now, these feelings and this notion that, that you have that, that local people should be doing this rather than respondents to the request for proposals. Did you have any feelings like that before the request was issued? Was that ever raised? Um, I don't know, it was very informative. I was not, and, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, I heard Bob received that information. You see, here's, here's my problem. I, I appreciate the, the, the board's advice on, on, on agricultural matters, and, and, to, and I am uninformed. And that's where, where the advisory board is pretty important. I am not, however, uninformed when it comes to, to uh, the consulting business. And, and I think that this is, this is wrong-headed really for two reasons. I think, first, it does not serve the county's interest to create a, a part-time employee for, for this purpose. When, when the requirements of, 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 the, of the grant and the application are, are really uh, tightly uh, circumscribed and the deliverables are, are laid out clearly that, that a respondent would have to deliver before he got paid. If we were to hire one of these three people or anybody else that, 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 that may come to your mind, then, and they don't, they don't complete the, the job at all, we're, 
we're really out of luck because they're going to be paid on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis. They will have received that money. We could get to the end and not have a product. The person could go off into the Netherlands. So then, if we if you look at the alternative, and that's one of the reasons why you hire a consultant is because because they're not paid unless they deliver what they were asked to deliver in in, in the proposal. And so you, you have really tighter controls over that situation. One of, one of the other issues we had, I just wanted to mention, when we reviewed the two RFPs, uh, the one RFP, there were uh, two-year-old financials from the company, for example. Uh, the other company didn't provide dates uh, in various phases of the project when deliverables were, were going to be delivered. They were kind of vague. And that's, those, those were two concerns that we had when Elma and I reviewed the two RFPs from the consultants. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem that I have with that, okay, is, is that you, you're, you're a flaws perhaps to your mind uh, within the, the, the response, but we somehow have an ideal situation with, the, with, these, with these employees that, that were, these three employees that we're considering, who could all just do the job, I, I suppose, flawlessly. We're not addressing the point that I'm making, that if they don't finish the job, then, then the money will have been spent and, and you will not have your product. And so that's why I think it's wrong on two scores. I think I think that, that the county is not served by hiring another person, and I don't think the, the board is served by, because there's a chance that they, they won't get this, this project delivered. If there was a problem with, with, with those two responses, you could always reissue the request for proposals. One of the comments that we made before, we discussed this, this did come up was, you know, if we hire a local person, we don't have to, they don't have to finish the plan. They can do all the data collection, they can do all the summarization, they can collect all the farm data, they can make contact with their neighbors. They're, they're here in the county, they live here, they understand farm, they understand our region. And then if we need a consultant, they, this is a 18 month window, so it's not like we got two days to get it done. You know, once we get this thing finalized, or if we get to where we need somebody to do a specific component, we can certainly bring a consultant in. That was one of the other options was, you know, bring consultants into the parts that we need that maybe we can't find a specialist for. So is it conceivable you would come back to the board saying that we want to go out for an uh, uh, RFP for this specific area, or we didn't finish a job and we need we need more time? Is that? Is that well, with our, the one that we just finished. Is that what you're saying to me? Well, the one that we just finished, we did this, we hired uh, three consulting firms, and then we, at the end, we hired a well, firm that specializes in gathering the data and summarizing it and writing the final document, it was a very large document. And it was very successful, I think we did a good job of gathering the data. Here we hired uh, two college interns to go out in the field and gather, gather the on-farm data and stream data, and we hired consultants to do different components. So I don't think that's a, Way to conduct business. The, uh, um, you're confident, though, that, if, that you could you could get all of these deliverables that that were requested done by by an employee or two, and that's you're not going to come you're not going to come back to us. That's how the first one was completed. Pardon? That's how the first one was completed. The first one we hired in house uh, proper extension was we hired an agent and the woman worked here and gave the plan and she did from A to Z and finish it and we submit to the state and Well, not spectacularly relevant because we, the county has engaged um, uh, consultants before and, and gotten exactly what they, what they asked for. So I, I think the situation is different. That's why I'm saying to you, if uh, if you see things you don't like in this in this, this response, then perhaps you want to consider uh, a reissuing reissue the RFP. And if that didn't work out, then I would, I would consider doing it in house but like I said I don't think this is going to serve the county to, to add, a, add this employee and for some reason I don't think you know I don't want to claim that I'm clear pointing here but I can see some of these things happening and, and if you want to talk about unassociated events you know that trigger these things and I can tell you that I sat here when when when, um, when somebody appeared before the board and, and, and told us that that the uh, that the, that the new uh, addition to the, to the jail was, was coming in on budget before they even issued the RFPs. And I, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, somehow I think we're gonna, we're gonna see this man come back and tell us that things came, came in over budget. And so when I'm sitting here right now, I just get this sense, this feeling that 
you're going to be making another presentation to us to get this thing just the way you want it at another point in time because what you're proposing now didn't, didn't really work out. Well, I would say we just finished a $700,000 project here. The county was gracious enough to sponsor the grant that we wrote. When we got the plan completed, it was very trying, very special. We got a lot of curves, a lot of obstacles. And as a group, as a firm of Texas Board of Economic Development, our, our uh, group of people, we were able to overcome obstacles and, and continue to push forward with the project. And we had a very successful ending despite some of the hurdles that we had to we had I have just one more question. The discussion about the three people, when did that come up again? Um, during the meeting, I said, I know of three people, and uh, Matt Osborne did ask me, or who would give me one name, and I gave the name of uh, the works here. Uh, he contacted them. Uh, didn't say whether or not they'd be interested, but he didn't talk about their educational background. Like I said, I didn't kind of consult anybody until after. Uh, we had this conversation on probably January with it, from the Jackson Board meeting. And the whole concept was, is there anybody who would they do it? So I, I, I could ask, and I didn't ask. I guess I, I guess I understand your concerns, but I guess that's also why you have oversight. When you need a good level of oversight over that person, him or her, or whoever's working on the project. Yeah, I agree. I'm trying to exercise oversight now. You know, Bill did say yeah. that they were able to go he would be able to provide that oversight and they would be dedicated to the process regardless of which way we went here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to step in here. Uh, Tom's got a question. So, Corey, I heard earlier you talk about the previous consultants that failed you. I don't look at it. I think the same oversight over a person or a consulting firm is the same to me. If I'm going to pay a certain amount of money and expect a certain service. So my question is, I can't imagine you pay these people up front. And again, I'm not rehashing old news that happened to you, but why did you pay them or finish paying them if they didn't go to the 14 counties and do their visits and do the job that you expected of them, which should have been outlined in the RFP? So it was, they held back $30,000. And then we pulled out the contract, renegotiated, it was uh, hashed over. Um, the consulting firm, the Department of State, the Department of State was managing the grant, uh, the report was on. And then we had to go back to them, and then we finally renegotiated some of the items. And you know, there were some things that they did do where they were supposed to, they did contact all the municipalities, whether it would be a phone call or online, through the internet. You know, so there was a lot of controversy on that. But if you look at you look at the responses, they're all I guess I guess what I'm getting at is if you had a consultant this time, forget about last time, and at point A they should be here with the project. If they're not, there should be no negotiating. I don't want to sound like Donald Trump here, but <laughs> there should be no negotiating. You have a contract. So at that point in time I don't believe in this renegotiating out when you negotiate it. Yeah. But, but if that same oversight isn't happening for a person and they're not cutting it, what are we going to do about that? I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is there's got to be oversight, whether it's a person as an employee that we're overseeing or the consultant. We need to have the oversight somewhere. Uh, 
that we, you know, a number of us have indicated, but I guess from my point of view, proposals by nature are boilerplate. You're replying to an RFP, the RFP delineates exactly what you're replying to, uh, whether it be a work plan, methodology, budget, timeline. So, you know, I think to say that because they submitted a proposal that is boilerplate, their work's going to be boilerplate, that's a, that's a pretty big leap for me. Um, on the other hand, I, you know, I think submitting a proposal that does have some language and understanding of the agriculture field, I think to me that's a good thing indicating that they might have experience in that field. Um, but I guess I have a really stark concern with taking these grant funds and our county cash match and putting that towards an hourly position. It would be one thing if we were contracting with an individual, which is really no, no different than contracting with a consulting firm, in my point of view. But as an hourly position, I don't see that there's any way we can guarantee an outcome. We, I don't see that there's any way we can guarantee deliverables on a certain time frame. I don't think there's a way we can guarantee that we get it done on budget. And it just, I think, is really worrisome. Yes, you need oversight, but if somebody's getting a paycheck every two weeks, all of a sudden that $35,000 is used up on data collection alone, and we have nothing to show for it. And then uh, what's, what's the state going to say at that point? Um, so I have a really big concern with paying an hourly wage for having a dedicated person doing this. You know, if we were gonna do this in-house and we were as a legislature making the commitment to hire an assistant planner full-time or part-time, whatever it may be, but that was gonna be a county position to work on county work and our planning department was going to do this work, that would be a different story because that would be the department's responsibility, not an individual's responsibility. But to take one individual who's being paid hourly Bi-weekly, I don't know. I'm, I don't know how you guarantee any results out of that. And like the hourly position, I thought contractually would be better. Hourly, you're uh, limited to 16 and a half or 17 hours a week was the limit. So I thought contractual, where they produce product, they bill accounting on that product to produce. And now the government said they were the overseeing position. They approve of that, and then there's a payment made. So I think that contractual would be a better option.
maybe not table, maybe pull a sponsorship, but I think before we pull our sponsorship, we need to give them direction on what we would be happy with. I think they just heard it. I don't know what the time constraints are on this. Uh, no. Yeah. Mr. Chair, uh -huh. Sure, Bill. Yeah, we were, uh, this was an 18 month project. The, uh, certainly the uh, State Department bag and market, so John Brennan was our contact there, been very indulgent thus far, but they, they want to see this move along. So, uh, you know, we, we need to get moving on fairly quickly here. I did want to uh, address a point here with the contract contracting with an individual. We had looked into that um, and we went into certain issues. We ran this by our, our personnel department here. Certain issues about whether someone is by uh, New York State labor law classified as an employee because they're coming in and so forth. So they could, somebody could do this, I would assume, as a DBA as long as they had other income and other business and, and, and things like that. But there were so it certainly could be an individual, but it would, it, that individual would have to meet certain criteria uh, in order not to be classified as an employee. There was uh, there were some real uh, nettlesome issues there that we had to work around and perhaps a county attorney. Basic criteria is whether or not the consultant has more than one client, whether they're actually in, in the consulting business. But in this case, we, 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 might, we might be uh, looking for a project manager I think I think all we really need to do is 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 go back one more time with, with the RFP and maybe tighten up the areas where where your uh, concerns have have not been been met and um, and see where that gets us because I think that there there would be a more appropriate response if there was certainly now since this discussion has taken place because people who who uh, had responded are, I'm sure are looking but but uh, also just getting it out there one more time. Maybe a benefit, and, that, and you could you'd have a chance to to um, to address uh, these issues. That you raised. Okay. I'll pull my sponsorship. Sponsorship. Um, would you suggest to do a special committee with uh, a few of the legislators to meet with the agriculture board and planner? Well, you know, it's interesting from my point of view. I was not. Um, being insincere when I when I said that that, that I appreciated the, the advice in, in in the area of expertise and, and, and so really I'd, I'd like that the notion that, that that the board frames frames what what, what they think would meet the uh, criteria of the, of, of the grant. Um, nevertheless, they can they can still rely on on staff to to do uh, to enhance the request for proposals. So I don't think it's for us to do that. Any more than I think it's for them to suggest that we, we hire an employee. So, well, the other problem right now is there's no sponsor for the resolution, so that dies. Um, but they don't have any direction, Mark. And the legislative Okay. All right. So, are you confident you can get back? It's all on tape. Back together. <laughs> it's all on tape. Okay. So, uh, would you be able to come back next month with a resolution? Or a... Okay, so you're going to go out for two months. Yeah. a couple of months? You know, we're, you know, we're getting into planning season soon. And, uh, okay, so back well, soon. what would you, you suggest, Martin? We should go meeting and get together. Okay. Martin, Take your consideration. There wouldn't be a specific need for a resolution right now because we did not take action on, on, a, on a resolution to hire employees. And there is no suggested uh, uh, responded to the RFP that we're, that, we're going to, that we're going to choose based on their recommendation. So the obvious need is, is to reissue the RFP 